Hi, I'm Noel with CreationEffects.com, and this is the tutorial for the 3D book templates for After Effects. There are currently three versions. There's a storybook, a wedding album, and a Bible. Uh, whichever book you get, they're all made the same way, so this tutorial will show you how to customize any of them. I'm going to be working in the storybook template for this tutorial. And this book is completely customizable in Adobe After Effects. Uh, you can put your own content on the pages which can be text or images or videos, and then you can animate the book to open and make the pages turn whenever you want. There are multiple camera motions to choose from, and there are multiple 3D environments to place your book in as well. It includes a lot of paper textures and cover texture options and a ton of design elements, as well as pre-made designs to help you fill up your pages and make them look really good. This has been Creation Effects' number one selling template since it first came out in 2014, and it's now undergone three major updates. So it's 2021 now, and I just finished the most recent update, and I changed enough that I decided to completely redo this tutorial, and uh, also because a lot of After Effects beginners are getting the template, so I wanted the tutorial to be more thorough so that anyone can create their book animation no matter what level they're at. Um, having said that, You'll benefit from looking up a tutorial on the basics, maybe just uh, getting familiar with the interface of After Effects before you proceed with the tutorial. I think that'll be helpful. Anyway, here are the topics I'm going to cover, and uh, I'm going to try and do the video chapters feature as well, so you should be able to hover over the timeline and see the topics there. I'm going to go through the four steps of customizing and animating the book. I'm going to talk about how to make the template run faster, um, how to add new pages and turn them. I'll have some tips for animating the camera for if you want to zoom in on specific areas of the pages. How to make the book open from the back uh, for those of you with languages that read from right to left. And how to convert to 4K, how to export your final animation, and lastly I'm going to go over some troubleshooting tips. All right, let's get started. Uh, the book is available at creationeffects.com. Uh, there's a link in the description. And once you download the zip file, there is a wrong and right way to uh, open the contents. If you're on Windows, you should right click it and look for an option that says extract all. Uh, if you're on a Mac though, you can just double click it to open it. And then the updated version is this file here, 3D Storybook 2020. So open that up in After Effects 2020 or later, that's version 17.0 or later. And if you have an older version of After Effects, you can open up this CS5 version. Yep, believe it or not, there are still people working in CS5 and CS6. And I get it, they don't want to pay every month. So when the template opens, you'll be greeted with some instructions for getting started. and. Uh, if we hide that layer and unhide any of these other layers, uh, you can see there's additional instructions here. Um, there's tips on making the, the template run faster, um, some basic how-tos, like how to add pages to your book. And I'm going to go over all of this stuff in more detail later. Uh, but just to let you know that this stuff is here, troubleshooting tips. We'll just uh, close this comp for now. and. Let's look at the storybook main comp. So in your project panel, that's this comp right here. This is your main animation. This is the one that you're going to work in the most and then export to make your final video. So let's just preview some of this and you can see what it looks like. So you'll notice how slow that's going. Uh, you can't preview this in real time, at least not yet. That's why I'm going to go over some tips uh, to make this faster and Eventually, you will be able to preview this in real time, I think. All right, so I let After Effects uh, cache this section about nine seconds. So now I can play back in real time, and uh, you can see kind of what this looks like. Notice how the book opens automatically in the first few pages turn, so it kind of goes to the middle of the book. And we can change all that later. I'll show you how. And uh, I've broken up the uh, customization into four steps. So let's go ahead and open the step one folder. Step one is choosing a scene or a 3D environment to put your book in. And you can see in the storybook template, we've got three scenes. We've got a castle, a library, and a sunroom. 
and the library is used by default. And if you're happy with that, you can just skip this step if you want. But if you want to look at these other scenes, uh, just double click any comp to open it. And uh, if you want to kind of look around the room a little bit, we can use our camera orbit tool. Um, that should be up in your tools up here. It looks like this. Or you can push the, uh, the C key on your keyboard. That's the shortcut. And then you can just click and drag in this composition window to get a 3D look around your room. So now it's just a matter of copying all of these layers, which make up everything in this room, and pasting them into your main comp here. But first, we need to delete the library that's here in this comp. So I'm going to scroll down, and scene layers are yellow. So we need to delete all of the yellow layers in this comp. I'll just select that first layer, scroll down to the bottom, and I'll shift click that last layer to select all the scene layers, and then I'll just delete them. And now I'll go back to my castle, and I'll select all of the yellow layers in this comp, starting with this light layer, and then I'll copy them. I'll go back to my main comp. I'll just close this one. And uh, if no layers are selected, it'll just paste to the very top. So I'll just paste them. And let me make this bigger so we can see. So with them all still selected, I'm just going to click and drag any of them and bring them down all the way to the bottom here. And that's all you got to do for step one. Something to note about these, these scenes, um, you might see control layers. One of those yellow layers or more than one might be labeled control layer. And that'll let you customize certain objects in the room. So this table control layer will let you edit the table. If you expand this layer and open up these transform properties, you can uh, change the position or the scale of the table. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but the option is there if you want it. Okay, let's close step one and I'll open up the step two folder. Step two is choosing a camera motion. And again, if you are happy with the camera motion that's in, in there by default, uh, you can just skip this step. Otherwise, open up this camera motion options comp. And you've got a number of camera layers in here, and you can read a brief description of what each one does in these layer comments here. Uh, just unhide any one of these layers to preview what it does. Um, you can just quickly preview it by dragging your playhead through the timeline. And it's, an, it's all pixelated, but it kind of shows you what that camera motion does. And uh, notice how this scene is kind of incomplete. I've taken out the background and the page layers uh, just to make this scene run quicker. So once you find one that you like, I think I'll go with this one. You can just copy that layer, select it, copy, close that comp, and then in your storybook main comp, you can just paste the camera layer. Since there's already a camera layer in here, the new camera layer is going to be automatically renamed to camera two. And we need to edit that, just rename it to camera. So delete the two and the space. And now that we've renamed this to camera, we can delete the original layer. There's a lot of expressions in here, uh, code that refers to this camera layer. So if you just go deleting camera layers or any other layer all willy-nilly, it's going to give you a ton of errors. So if that ever happens, just undo your action and uh, you should be good to go. Okay, let's close step two. And I'll open up the step three folder, which is editing page content. And uh, so this will be where you'll spend most of your time, probably. Uh, let's look at these page pre-comps first. There's a pre-comp here for every page in your book, front and backs. Um, a pre-comp is just a comp inside of a comp. So we've got our storybook main comp here, uh, which you can find right here. And then inside, we've got all the pages. Each of these layers is a page in your book. And these pre-comps are here in the page pre-comps folder. So if you wanted to put something on page one, you can just open up that pre-comp and uh, put whatever you want in here. So you could uh, import some images into your project. We'll just bring in this stained glass window. And you can drag that into your comp above your paper texture. And you can move it however you want and uh, open up the transform properties and scale it if you want to. Uh, you can choose a different blending mode. 
to make it blend with the, the, uh, the paper texture better. I'm not going to go over this in detail because I do a whole tutorial about adding content to the pages of your book. So definitely if you're a beginner and uh, even if you're an intermediate, uh, you should probably look up that tutorial because I go over a lot of good tips for using the images in this folder and uh, making them look good on your paper. So let's look at the other stuff in this folder. Um, there's this instructions comp. I, I haven't talked about those, but each folder has its own instructions comp. Uh, this video probably goes into more detail, but uh, that could be a quicker option for you. In the images folder, and uh, this is one of the things that really sets each template apart. Like in the storybook template, there's going to be more fairy tale themed artwork. And in the Bible template, you'll find more religious themed artwork. So, but uh, what each template does have in common are plenty of cover textures and paper textures to choose from. So you can choose the paper that you want for your book and then drag these into those pre comps. In the sample designs folder, uh, you can see there's a bunch of comps here, and let me just open one of these. So we've got a pre-designed page that you can use as a template if you want to just edit the text and maybe add in your own picture or text into here. And then you could just copy these layers and paste them into your page pre-comp in here. So you don't have to use these, I just thought they might save some people some time. Again, I, I talk more about all of this stuff in the other tutorial, so you can check that out if you want to. But for now, let's just move on to step four, which is animating your book. So we actually do that in the main comp here. And uh, before I show you how to keyframe the pages to turn and everything, I'm going to tell you how to make this comp run really fast. I don't have these settings on by default because I want you to see what it'll look like in your final animation first. Uh, if you remember in that first instructions comp that we were looking at, uh, we've got these hidden layers. And if we unhide this making it faster layer, we've got a number of, of tips here that you can do to make this comp run faster. And you don't have to do them all. You don't have to do any of them if you don't want to. But the more that you do, the faster it's going to run. Each one will cost you a little bit of quality. So this comp isn't going to look quite as nice, but uh, I don't think it really matters. I, I think the most important thing is that you don't waste a lot of time caching this animation and waiting for it to uh, be able to play. So let me go over these really quick. Uh, set your preview resolution. Uh, if you go to your main comp and look at this little button here, you want to set this to half or less, uh, not full. You don't really need to see it at full resolution for a preview. Next, turn off motion blur. So that's this button here. You can just click that so that it's not blue. But be sure to set that back before you're doing your final render because motion blur makes it look nice. Uh, turn on fast to draft. Okay, so in here, there's this little button here with looks like a lightning bolt. Click that and change it from adaptive resolution to fast draft. So you can see that did some weird things to the scene. But look how fast it's going already compared to what it was before. And let's keep going. Turn off effects. Okay, so all of these pre-comp layers here, which are the pages of your book and the covers, they all have uh, an effect on them that makes the pages appear to bend. We can turn that effect off and make it run a lot faster if we select all those layers and then click on this little effects box. And that'll turn off the effects for those layers only. And hide unnecessary layers. If you don't really need to see the background scene, you can just hide those scene layers, which remember, those are the yellow layers. I would maybe leave on your light layers because they help you to see shadows and stuff and it, it'll just make it easier to see the pages of your book. But these other ones, you don't really need. So you can select them all and hit those little eye icons. And preview panel settings. Um, if you don't see the preview panel, you can go to Window and then click on Preview. 
and then you can set skip to one and it'll skip every other frame. It'll make it look a little bit choppy when you play it back, but it makes it twice as fast because it's only rendering every other frame. And lastly, trim page content. Um, I might talk about that more later. But let's see what that did. So much faster. It's going to be much easier to work with. All right, so I undid most of my changes uh, just because I like things to look nice. Um, anyway, something else I forgot to mention. You can also hide this dust particles layer at the top, and that'll also make it run faster. And uh, another thing, be sure to uh, read through these tips and pay attention to which ones will affect your final render. Um, because you want your final render to be the highest quality possible, so um, some of these you'll want to reset, put them back the way they were before you're doing your final render. Okay, back in my main comp, I'll select the control layer at the top, and, and then I'll go to my effect controls panel up here. And if you don't see this panel, just go to Window and choose Effect Controls. In here, you've got a lot of different customization controls for uh, changing your book or the scene. Most people aren't going to need to touch any of these down here. So I'm, I'm going to focus on these page turn controls. These will be how you animate the pages. Uh, you can see, since some of these are blue, these first few pages uh, have keyframes already. If you remember, those first few pages turn automatically. So we can see those keyframes if we select the control layer and then hit the U key on your keyboard. And you can zoom out or zoom in like this, or use the plus or minus key on your keyboard. So on each of these page turn controls, you can see we've got a pair of keyframes. Um, I'm going to actually delete some of these. So now it's just the front cover that's animated. And uh, if you look at the value here for the front cover, as I scrub through, you can see it goes from 0 to 100% turned. So that's what you need to do for each of these page turn controls that you want to turn. And the easiest way to do it, since these already have keyframes on them by default, is you can just select them, uh, drag a box around the keyframes, and then copy them. And then you can select one of these page turn controls and then paste. And you can see how those pasted to wherever your playhead is. Uh, but you can also just drag them to wherever you want your page turn to start. These have to turn in order. You can't just turn page 7 without turning page 3 and 5 first. So, I mean, it's like a real book. If you turn directly to page 7, then page 7 would just go through all these other pages and it would look awful. So let me do that again for page 3. I'll just paste and page 5. And I'll drag this over because um, I think you can, with the updates I made, I think you can have pages turn all at once. But uh, I kind of like how it looks when they're staggered a little bit, one after the other. So just put a few frames of separation in there. And uh, just so you know, let's go over how to add new keyframes as opposed to copying and pasting. You can see more of these page turn controls if you just expand them like that. So we've turned page pages 1 through 5. Uh, let's do page 7. You probably noticed how these are just odd numbers. So And that's because each of these controls turn a whole sheet. So that's front and back, two different pages. So odd numbered pages are always on the right side of the book. So page 5 has already turned here. And this would be page 7 that we're looking at. All right, so to turn page 7, we would have a value of 0, and we would add a keyframe by clicking this little stopwatch icon. And then you could go forward about a second or so and just turn the value up all the way to 100. Now, these keyframes look a little different from these keyframes. Um, these ones are linear keyframes, which means that the page will turn at a constant pace. To get something a little more realistic, uh, it would be nicer if it could start out a little bit slower and then speed up. So there's a couple ways to do that. We could select a keyframe, like the first keyframe, right click it, go to Keyframe Assistant, and choose Easy Ease Out. And uh, we could do the same thing with the last keyframe, just choose Easy Ease In. Or another way to have uh, more control 
is to select a keyframe and then go to your graph editor. That's this little icon here. And I'll zoom in with my plus key. And we can make it even slower in the beginning by dragging this little handle outward. If we wanted to add a handle up here, um, I think it's the Alt key. It's the Option key on my Mac. You just Option click it and then you can do this. So that'll give you a much smoother looking page turn. Um, I definitely recommend that you do that. Okay, I think this is a good time to talk about timing. This is an issue that has confused many users. And so I want to be sure to clear this up in this tutorial. Um, let's pretend we've got stuff on these pages that you, you already put them in your page pre-comps in the step three folder. And uh, let's say we want to turn page seven um, at the eight second mark around here. And let's say we want a video to play on the next page, which would be page nine. So I would open up my page pre-comps folder and I would put the video in this pre-comp and I happen to already have a video here, just a random shot I took of this gecko. He's just walking across. Okay, so if we go back to the main comp and we go forward and we turn the page and it disappears. It's not, it's not there. Where is it? I'll calm down. I'll show you where it is. If we go back to page nine, here's where we are in our final comp and the video is over here. If we want to see our video at the eight second mark, then we gotta drag this layer over so that it starts playing at the eight second mark. So now if we go back and we scrub through, ta-da! So whatever you see in a pre-comp at that time, that is when you will see it in your main comp at that same time. So a simple concept once you see it, I think, but man, I've heard from so many people. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about adding pages because this book only has 20 pages, so that's 10 sheets. And it might look like more than that, but that's all there is. So I wouldn't blame you if you want to add more pages. Uh, first, let me show you how to delete pages really quick. Just select any odd numbered page and uh, even numbered page next to it. Uh, just not page 19 and 20. These ones that say top and bottom on them, those ones have to stay in there. Um, so probably the pages right before that, just delete those. You can do it again. But more likely is you want to add pages. So I'll undo that. To add pages, you need to select the page 19 and 20 layers and then duplicate them. So that's Control D or Command D on a Mac, or you can go to your edit menu and just choose duplicate. And with them still selected, drag them down to the bottom below the other page layers, and then you'll rename them. Uh, first, make sure that the one that says top is on top, the one that says bottom is below it, and then rename the numbers. So this one would be page 21, and this one would be 22. And uh, you could do that as many times as you want. Just duplicate, drag them down. You can do it a bunch of times. and then go through them and rename them. So now I've got 30 pages in the book. You could keep going if you want. I'm not sure what the limit is. I, I kind of redid all the expressions and I changed how the book opens and the pages turned. And it seems to work a lot better now. It used to start to uh, hiccup after 40 pages or 50 pages. But uh, I think those problems are pretty much ironed out now. It seems to work a lot better. So just, you can keep adding pages until you run out of patience because it, I mean, it is going to get slower and slower the more pages you add. I still recommend that you try to keep it under 40. Um, but let's uh, go back to our control layer and I'll point out something here. The page turn controls only go up to page 17. So in order to turn page 19 and up, we have to go back down to these layers and the page turn control is on the layer itself. It's not on the control layer. So for page 19, you can see it up here or you can see it in your timeline 
if you expand it. And uh, yeah, under effects, here it is. You've got your control, which you can keyframe. And it's the same process I showed you. Just go to where you want and add two keyframes. And you would just repeat that process for any new page that you want to turn. Uh, the page turn control is always going to be on the odd numbered pages. So the ones that say top. Now, these new pages that I created are all duplicates of page 19 and 20. So whatever was on page 19 is going to be on all of these pages as well um, until we change it. So what we need to do is create some new pre-comps and then connect them to our new page layers. So it's really easy. Just select page 20 and duplicate that. Make a duplicate copy for each new page and rename them. And I don't know why it jumps up here. They should be in alphabetical, but... Anyway, you get the picture. Rename them all. And then to connect them to the new page layers, you would select that new page layer. So I'll just select page 21. And then I'll select page 21 up here, the pre-comp. And then I'll hold down the Alt or the Option key on your keyboard. And I'll just drag the new pre-comp onto the new layer. So now they're, they're linked so that whatever you put inside this page pre-comp here will show up on this page in your book. And uh, one more thing I forgot to mention. If you add a lot of pages, it might be a good idea to increase the width of your book. Because the more pages you add, the closer they are to each other. And when 3D layers get too close to each other in After Effects, After Effects freaks out and you start seeing all these glitches. Because it's not a 3D program and it doesn't really know how to handle it. So it's a good idea to keep them a little bit spaced out. And to do that, uh, we, there's a control for that on your control layer. Uh, just go down to the book transform controls and then you've got this spine thickness control. So you can see if I crank this way up how that's making the book thicker and it makes the pages more spread out. Let's look at these other book transform controls. Um, we've got a position control so you can move your book in 3D space. And uh, further down we've got some rotation controls. So that's cool and all, uh, except once the book opens, and I'll go further down the timeline. So I'm going to take this opportunity to show you an example of what couldn't go wrong. You can see how our page is cut off here. Something weird is going on. And usually that has to do with two pages intersecting, which means our pages are not turning in the correct order. And I have a feeling it's with our new pages. So I, I put those keyframes on page 19 so that they start to turn um, without keyframing all these previous pages before I did that. And I duplicated this layer so they all have those keyframes. And I'm not going to bother changing them all. Um, but that's something to look out for. But uh, the other issue I wanted to show you uh, on these book transform controls here once the book opens, if you, uh, if you move the book or rotate it, you might start to see some major warping of the pages. Um, that's the page bend effect, which you can turn down here. Um, further down in these page placement controls, we could set that to two or something. That uh, the bending of the pages or the curving of those pages, it's, it's an illusion. It's actually a 2D effect. Your pages aren't actually bending in 3D. And the amount of bend is linked to the position of your camera. And when you move your book or rotate it in three dimensions, it actually kind of messes up that uh, relationship of the camera position and the amount of bend. Anyway, just you probably won't move your book at all anyway, but uh, that's something to watch out for. Okay, there's also this book scale control. Uh, if you wanted to change the dimensions of your book, um, that actually just stretches it. So really, if you want to change the dimensions of your book or the pages, the way to do that would be to go to your page pre-comps and change the dimensions of these pre-comps. 
So you can see here it's 2,350 pixels by 3,000 pixels. But if you open up any of these and then go to your Composition Settings panel, it'll open up this panel and you can enter in new dimensions here. And you would just have to do that for every pre-comp, including the covers. And keep in mind, if your book is a hardcover book, um, the covers are usually a little bit bigger than the, the actual pages. If it's a paperback book, uh, like a magazine or something, then you probably want them all to be the same resolution. And uh, you can change whether it's a hardcover or paperback using these two controls here. So we can uncheck hardcover here, and now this cover will have the same page bend that the, uh, the pages have. Um, there's also page spread. That's what kind of keeps your pages fanned out. If we increase that, it just fans out the pages. And notice how there's this gap. The ends of the pages are not actually connected to the spine of the book. It's just not possible since these pages can't actually curve like that. But if you're looking at it from this angle, this is pretty obvious and it doesn't look very good. So you could decrease that distance from the spine using this control here. And that kind of minimizes the weirdness a little bit. If you're looking at the book straight from straight above, um, that probably isn't going to be an issue. And uh, let me just show you a quick tip. I always tell people to change their, uh, their 3D view to front. So that's this little drop-down menu here. If you change this to front view, we are now level with the table, and we're looking at the book from the front. And it might be more obvious when I scrub through the timeline. So here's the book closed, and if we scrub through, just look at those blue lines. Those represent every page layer. And you can see how the, the pages turn. So that is a good way to tell if your pages are intersecting or if, if one of them is in the wrong position. Just switch it to front view and that might help you identify the problem. All right, lastly, we've got these light and shadow controls. Um, mostly these control the, the light layers in your scene. So these three layers here. If there is an object in your room that maybe you want a little brighter, and you don't want to brighten the whole scene, but just that layer, uh, you can select that layer. Let's do the tabletop. Select the layer and hit the A key two times quickly, and then you can increase the ambient property or decrease. All right, just a few more things that I wanted to go over with you. First of all, animating the camera layer. A lot of people want to have their camera move in on a certain area of their page. And uh, I used to try to discourage people from messing with the camera at all, just because cameras can be tricky in After Effects. But I was thinking, well, with the camera tools, it can be somewhat straightforward. Uh, so I figured I could just show that to you. First, I'll select the camera and I'll reveal the keyframes by pressing the U key on your keyboard. And you can see that this camera motion lasts for 15 seconds. So most of all this time here, it's just slowing down. So you can see if, if I scrub through, it's just slowly moving in on the book. If we wanted to speed that up, we could just drag these last keyframes in a little bit. So uh, let's say right about here, we wanted to move in on this video of the gecko. The first thing we would need to do is uh, add a position keyframe. Since we're going to start our motion here, we add a keyframe there for the position and also for the point of interest, uh, which isn't showing here, but you can reveal that by pushing the A key on your keyboard. And if you hold down Shift and push the A key, it'll keep all of these properties visible, but also make this visible. So uh, add a keyframe for that one as well. And uh, you can see here, our keyframe looks like a, a square, a box. Uh, we don't want that. We want a linear keyframe. Um, so you should be able to change that just by control or command clicking it so that it looks like a diamond. So now that we have our point of interest and position keyframes, we can go forward a couple seconds or so and just move our camera into place uh, using these camera tools here. And again, the shortcut for those is the C key. So just keep pressing the C key to alternate 
Um, this tool here, the camera move tool, will let you move the camera over without rotating it. And uh, this one will let you move in closer or further out. You just click and drag. And uh, again, we've got linear keyframes here. If you remember, that means that the motion is going at a constant speed, a constant pace. So we can change that by right-clicking them with them all selected and keyframe assistant, and I'll just choose easy ease. That's the simplest. And if we scrub through now, you can see how that moves in on the video. Um, if you wanted to move your camera back out, we could add two more keyframes here. Go forward, and we'll copy and paste those first keyframes to here. And let's scrub through that and make sure it looks okay. So that's the basics. Anything more advanced than that, uh, you're on your own. <laughs> There's a lot of tutorials online that can help you, though. Let's move on. Let me talk about right to left books because a lot of people ask me how to do that. And before I had a really clunky way of doing it and it didn't really make sense to people. Um, and that was because in the previous versions you couldn't turn the back cover. There was no control for it. But I fixed that now. Now we've got a, a control for the back cover. So if you want your book to open from right to left, um, all you have to do I'll get rid of all the keyframes for these. Turn all of these up to 100%. And also be sure to do that for the page 19 layer. Okay, so if we uh, go to the first frame, we can see now that the book is closed and flipped over, so we're looking at the back cover. So now it's the same process as left to right books. Um, it's just that the page numbers are, are backwards, they're flipped. So now page 19 is your first page, page 17 is your second page, and so on. And uh, instead of animating them to open from 0 to 100%, you're animating them to go from 100 to 0. And uh, <clears throat> your back cover becomes your front cover, so you know whatever you want on your front cover, you would put in your back cover pre-comp in this folder here, right here. Converting to 4K, um, that is not something I really recommend because I think the template is slow enough as it is. Um, when you're when you're doing that final render, it's going to take a while at uh, at HD resolution, which is 1920 by 1080. But if you really do need a 4K animation, I think it's good enough to just change the resolution of this main comp. So you would go to the Composition Settings panel and enter in a 4K resolution. Or I can just select it from the presets here. So now it's going to be 4096 pixels wide. But you can see the, uh, the angle, our camera angle has changed. So what we can do, I'll open up the camera properties and I'm just gonna double the zoom amount. I can just do times two. And that gets us back to that same, to that view that we had originally. I doubled the zoom because I, I doubled the resolution. Anyway, like I showed you earlier, if you wanted to increase the resolution of the pages as well, you can do that by changing the resolution of these pre-comps. But uh, I think they're high enough res because they're they're 2,300 by 3,000 each page. So the book, when it's open, should more than fill up your 4K comp. And let me show you how to render your final animation. Uh, most of you know how to do that, but for those who haven't done it before, um, you're going to render out this main comp here. Uh, just go to File and Export. And I recommend that you use Adobe Media Encoder Q. Um, actually, before I do that, make sure that you've set your, your out point. So that's this bar right here. However long you want your animation to be, let's say it's 30 seconds long, uh, the shortcut is the N key on your keyboard. So that will set the out point. So now this is the only part of the comp that will render. Anyway, go to File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue, 
and then that'll open up this app and you can see it here. What I usually recommend, um, I like H.264 and then you can select the Vimeo or the YouTube preset down here. Just make sure it's full HD unless you've converted it to 4K and then use 4K. And you can choose a new name and location on your hard drive here and then you hit play. And then you can uh, go on a trip to Australia or something because it's going to take a long time. Okay, the last thing I was going to go over are some troubleshooting tips. Um, the first one, uh, let me let me create an error real quick. I'm going to rename this folder. So this is the folder that has all the images from the template. So now when we go back, look what happened. It lost track of where all the images are stored on your hard drive. So you might get an error like this um, when you first open the project, or you might see a bunch of rainbow colored boxes. Sometimes After Effects just does that. It has to do with the zip files. So if that happens, what you can do is just reconnect one file and the rest will reconnect automatically. So in the search field here, I can type in missing and uh, just click any one of these. So I'll just do this file here. Um, I'll right click it and I'll choose replace footage and then file. And uh, I need to go to my desktop. Um, wherever your zip file was, that's where you need to go and look in the, the storybook folder and in the footage folder. What you could actually do is just search for the file and open it. It says 315 additional missing items have been found. Yay! Another issue you might notice are stripes or some ugly patterns that show up on your pages or on the desk. Let me move in a little bit. So this is a good example here. Those patterns will look a lot worse uh, in your preview, especially if you have your resolution set to half or less. If we set this to full, it mostly goes away. You can still see some aliasing here with the shadow, and that can be hard to get rid of, but this is as worse as it gets. Um, you might be able to eliminate it if you move some of these 3D layers further apart from each other, but in most cases, that disappears in your final render. Another issue you might notice is flickering on areas of the of the pages as they turn, especially near the binding of the book. And you can see that in this clip here. More than likely that's happening because you've turned on depth of field on your camera. And I personally love how depth of field looks. If you double click the camera, you can turn it on right here. But it, it does create uh, some flickering glitches sometimes on the pages. So it's probably not worth it. Um, I can't bring myself to say just don't use it because I like how it looks, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. Okay, that, that is everything I wanted to go over. I'm, I want to go give myself some Chipotle or Cold Stone to reward myself for getting through all of that. And uh, the best of luck to you guys and creating your animation. I hope you like the effect and uh, be sure to check out the other stuff at creationeffects.com. Uh, lots of cool effects that don't require any plugins, all for Adobe After Effects. Uh, the most recent is Pixel Pusher. It lets you make better particle animations. There's also Infinite Horizon to do perspective bending in After Effects. And there's Micro for making microscopic animations. There's also Falling Leaves. Custom flocks of birds. Swarms of insects or schools of fish, and there's a number of animal templates. So you can put lions or wolves or elephants into your videos, and you can make them jump or run or roar or whatever you want to do to them. There's uh, VHS effects or glitch effects or old film effects. There's custom 3D oceans. There's a cool particle trails effect and an artifacts template that has over 40 different art effects for your footage.